Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome to an intro to custom CSS for Squarespace. Here's what you're going to learn in this video training. We're going to review what CSS is and how it works with Squarespace. We're going to talk about the three different ways you can install CSS on your site and what makes each one of those unique. And we're also going to talk about why the version and theme of Squarespace you're using makes a big difference in how you write codes. But before we dig into any of that stuff, I do need to mention some important legal information. The term Squarespace is a trademark of Squarespace Incorporated. This content is not affiliated with Squarespace Incorporated. I just happen to be a Squarespace designer who loves teaching other designers how to use custom CSS to make really unique sites. Now that that important legal stuff is out of the way, I'd also like to mention that just beneath this video is a link for you to download the PDF guide I created to go along with this training. This free guide has all of the information that we're covering in the video today, and it has a few code snippets for you to practice with so you can get started with some CSS on your own site. So go ahead and download that guide so you can follow along, and we'll dive right in. What is CSS and what can it do in Squarespace? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and the middle term in that is the most important, style. CSS changes the style of your website. We're talking about different colors and fonts and things like that, but it does not change functionality. I think this is really important to mention. Squarespace is the best place to practice using some CSS code because if you change something on your site and you don't like the way it looks, all you have to do is remove the CSS that you added and your site will go back to the way that it was before. CSS does not change functionality, it only changes your site style. Alrighty, so now that you understand that, when to use CSS? You can use CSS to make color changes, like changing the color of a button or a particular font or even a page background. You can use CSS to change different sizes and layouts. So let's say you want something to only show up one way on mobile and a different way on desktop, CSS can make that happen. And you can also use CSS to create cool hover effects, like changing the color of a button on a hover. That's one of the most popular ones that I see out there. So again, CSS is for changing the style of your site. And I do want to mention as much as I love custom code, always start with your design menu. See if you can make the change you want to see in your design menu before you try some custom CSS. So what exactly goes into a custom CSS code? There are four main elements to every code. It starts off with the element name. This is your way of saying, hey, this is the one thing that I'm about to change. So the element name in this example is the name for a button. And after that, we have an opening bracket. This is you saying, okay, browser, you know that element I just told you about? We're about to make some changes to it. After that, you have the style change, what you're actually changing about that element. In this example, we're changing the background color of a button. So my style changes between those two brackets. And then finally, you have to have a closing bracket to let the browser know that you're finished, you've written the code, that's all that you're changing about that particular element. So, now that you understand what CSS is and how it works with Squarespace, let's talk about how you can install CSS on a Squarespace website and why each one of these three different ways is unique. So of the three ways to install custom CSS, the first and most common is the main custom CSS section of your design menu. You can find this on your site by navigating to design and then scrolling all the way down to custom CSS at the very bottom. That is going to make a change to your entire Squarespace website. That change will apply to every single page. So if you go there to change a button color on a hover, that will be applied to every button on every page in your site. Let's say you only want a code to apply to one page, like removing the header and footer to create a landing page, for example. For that, you're gonna to wanna to use page header code injection. That's under your page settings menu for the individual page. It's if you're already in edit mode, on the top right hand side, you'll see a gear icon. Click on that to open up your page settings menu and scroll down to the advanced option at the very bottom. This is where you can place your page header code injection. Again, that's in edit mode. The top right hand side, you click that gear icon and then select advanced. This is where you'll be placing your code. You can also navigate there outside of edit mode by using your main menu. 
select the pages menu and then click on that same gear icon next to the name of the page that you'd like to edit. From here, you'll see the same menu and you can select advanced to enter your page header code injection. Again, that's in your pages menu, select the gear icon for the page and then advanced. This is where you'll be typing in your code. It's going to change only that page and won't affect the rest of your site. Now I want to mention this little pro tip here, your page header code actually loads before the rest of your content. So for single page changes, it's the best place to put a little bit of custom CSS. So the browser knows as soon as I've loaded this content, it already knows what style to apply to that content. There is a third option that you have here for applying custom code to a single page, and that's called a code block. I only recommend using a code block if you're on a personal plan and you can't use page header code injection. Your code block is going to load with the rest of your content. So if you're using a code block, you risk the chance of having the site style not being applied as soon as the page loads. So it might look a little funky within the first few seconds of loading. However, in a personal plan, you can't use page header code injection. You can only use a code block. So unfortunately, this is pretty much your only option, but it is a great workaround if you want to apply code to a single page, but you're on a personal plan. So regardless, for these individual page changes, something really important to mention is that you have to nest your code between these style brackets. When you're using the custom CSS section of your site, the one that applies it to everything, the browser already knows that's a style change. But if you're using page header code injection or you're using an on-page code block, you need to make sure the browser knows the code you're about to share is a style code. So you have to add these brackets here, okay? Now, again, if you're worried about keeping track of this, don't worry, I already took all the notes for you in that free guide below. So hopefully you've downloaded that and you're following along. All of this information is still listed in that guide for you, okay? Alrighty, so what have we covered? We've covered what CSS is and how it works with Squarespace sites. We've covered how to install CSS in those three different ways and what makes each one of them unique. So then lastly, and arguably the most important part, we need to talk about why themes make a big difference in how you write code. There are actually two versions of Squarespace out there right now. We have Squarespace 7 and 7.1. Squarespace 7 is built with what are known as theme families. Squarespace 7.1 is built on one template. So all codes that exist that are for 7.1 will work for all 7.1 websites. But when we're talking about theme families for Squarespace 7, some of those theme families use a different name for the same element. So what the heck does that mean? Here's a great example for you. A website header you think would be the exact same thing in all Squarespace websites, but you'd be wrong. It has a different code name depending upon what theme and version you're using. If you're in a Brine theme website, the code for the header is actually called dot capital H header. In a Bedford website, it's the hashtag symbol followed by a lowercase h header. In 7.1 websites, it's period and a lowercase h for header. In a rally template, for example, it's going to be site dash header. So you see here, these are all different code names. So if you find a code that, let's say, changes the background color of a header or hides a header, you have to make sure you're using the right code for your theme. Now, if you don't know your version or your theme, that guide is going to show you how to find out. I've got some steps in there to explain exactly where you can find that information so you can keep that in mind when you're working with code. I also want to mention that all of the tutorials on my website are labeled for version and theme. So definitely pay attention to that very first part of the tutorial there underneath the title. It'll let you know if this is the right tutorial for you or if there's a different one that you should be using. Alrighty, so we've covered it. What CSS is and how it works with Squarespace sites. It changes the style. And how to install CSS in three different ways and what makes them unique. We've got custom CSS that changes everything, page header code injection that changes just one page, and a code block that changes just one page in a personal plan. And we've talked about why themes make a big difference in how you write code, because they sometimes have a different name for a different element. So again, all of this information is inside your guide, along with a few fun practice codes for you to try. 
So go ahead and download that guide and get started with those on your site. And if you're ready for more and you want to keep going, I do have an entire tutorial library available at insidethesquare.co forward slash Squarespace tutorials. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash Squarespace tutorials. There you are going to find an absolute ton of information about making all kinds of cool code changes to your website. So when you're ready to keep this education train a rolling, head on over there and learn some more stuff. That's it for this quick video introduction to custom CSS for Squarespace. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you learned something awesome. If you have any questions along the way, my inbox is always open. You can reach me at hello at insidethesquare.co. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.